I'm going to go over renewable energy and I'm going to focus on these here and a little bit about efficiency and conservation and energy in general. So here is some data on energy consumption in the world. I have data for 2013 and 2040, so the projected growth. Most used energy in the world comes from oil. You don't have to know these percentages, but know that we use a lot of oil. Coal is second on the list. Um, natural gas trailing right behind it. And then nuclear. And, um, and according to this, nuclear is, is below our first renewable, which is the most used renewable, which is biomass. Remember, this is about energy in the world. So don't uh, think of just electricity production. When biomass is being used, it's used primarily for heat. But a lot of the world uses biomass to produce heat, which is a type of energy. Um, and then you have nuclear and other renewables would be um, anything else we've talked about. But the second most uh, used renewable source is hydroelectric, you see here. And then, so they're the only ones that made it to the map. The other renewables would be wind, solar, and the fastest growing is wind. So keep in mind, even though solar's up there and you look at projected um, sites, they're kind of jumping back and forth. But look at the projections. We expect other renewables, so wind and solar, to grow from 1% to 4%, which seems insignificant, but it is pretty significant. We're dropping in the use of oil, increasing in the use of natural gas, and again, you don't have to know these, but I just want you to think about that. Where are we headed? Because that's important. Here's what we use, uh, produce most in the U.S. Uh, natural gas, oil is the leading production. You know we have a lot of coal. Um, and then here are the rest. Something just to look at again. Not something you have to know on the test. I want to talk about advantages overall to using these forms of energy. Okay, so we've talked about these. Let's see why this would make it better. One of the first things we want to see is, I mean, obviously, we're not going to be burning fossil fuels. We're going to reduce um, emissions. We're going to reduce emissions of CO2, SO4, or sulfur, methane, and nitrous oxide. So all of these things that uh, come with the burning of fossil fuel, the main gases. CO2, remember, linked uh, to global warming. This is linked to acid rain. This is linked to global warming. This is linked to global warming and acid rain. And you also want to know that this is primarily found in natural gas. This is found in all of them, okay? But this is a main component of natural gas. This is a main component of coal, okay? Um, we also want to know that it is never going to run out, okay? So we're talking about renewable but we have an infinite supply of this uh, energy source, so that's definitely a positive. Anything you do um, to open up a plant or produce goods or whatever is gonna produce uh, job opportunities. So switching from uh, what we already have to a different type of uh, source of renewable power is gonna give you job opportunities. There are some disadvantages that we have to consider, and, and the main disadvantage is that in initial costs to any of these projects is gonna be expensive. So opening up a plant or new technology is definitely an investment phase. I'm sure the outcome is always gonna be pretty beneficial and that's usually an advantage, but keep that in mind. So I'm not gonna talk about these when I talk about each one, because these are general to each type of energy. So I'm gonna start with biomass since it is the leading um, renewable energy source being used in the world. And for each energy, I'm going to talk about usage. I'm going to talk about where it's being used in the world. I'm going to talk about things about it and how it produces energy, some transformations and advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so we'll start with usage. Biomass can be used for heating. And there's no word there, but it should say heating. <laughs> Electricity production, uh, transportation, and for industry. So biomass is my only renewable energy that will cover all of our energy needs. So you add the word heating here. Electricity production, transportation, and industry. Two thirds of, and if you recall this part of the map, is considered less developed countries or countries that are still in the process of developing 
use biomass for heating. But remember, as I told you in class, you want to focus on the U.S. being the leader of all renewable sources and not worry about specific countries. Biomass fuels can come from the following. Wood is considered biomass. I mean, let's take this word and break it down. Bio means living. Mass means anything that takes up space. So living matter or matter from living things can be considered fuels. So wood, food, which we call alcohol fuels. Waste can be used as a biomass fuel or organic waste. Crops in general. And then gas from landfills, which we just talked about today, and specifically methane. So let's add that word now that we're familiar with it, methane. We're going to take that and we're going to use it to make electricity. So that's something that we want to focus on. We know that biomass is used for direct heating. So think about of wood burning. We've been doing it for centuries. But if we want to produce electricity from biomass, there's two ways to do this. One is called direct firing, which is just like a coal-powered plant. We're going to put the waste into the uh, boiler, so we're going to add it. We're going to burn it, so here's our garbage, here's our corn, here's our whatever you want to say um, is used. We burn it. We're going to add water. The water, and here's the water being added, is going to produce steam, which is going to spin a turbine right here, yes, which is going to be attached to the generator, and it's going to send the electric current. The same thing is going to happen when we do coal firing, the difference is that they're going to do a combination of this with coal. So they're going to use fossil fuels in a boiler. So right here would be your uh, natural gas, oil pellets. They're talking about any, they're even talking about nuclear. And combining it with a biomass boiler to generate the most power and send the, the maximum electric current. This is commonly used, by the way. So we're substituting this to extend the lifespan of our non-renewable resources. The energy transformation, so let's say we start with wood in the boiler, is going to be chemical energy, just like coal. And then it produces heat, then it turns into steam and spins a turbine, which is mechanical, and then sends the electric current. We can also convert biomass into what we call biofuels. So biomass, remember, we already burned it so we could produce heat. We converted it into electricity, in the plant and we can also convert it into a fuel base which will supply us with the needs for transportation. So we're going to take corn and we're going to turn it into ethanol which is considered a liquid fuel. They literally harvest corn and they, they are growing corn just for this process alone. We can also make biodiesel fuel from organic uh, matter, basically vegetable oil or animal fat can be recycled and mixed with alcohol. I'm sorry, can, can or recycled oil can be used and mixed with alcohol. So literally you can purchase recyclable oil from uh, a um, fast food restaurant, mix it with alcohol and convert it to what's called biodiesel. And all you have to do is have an engine conversion and you'll be able to run your car with this fuel. Lastly, biomass, is going to be the one renewable resource which will meet our needs for the industry. Remember, as you learn, fossil fuels are responsible for the, the making of plastic, solvents, adhesives, um, so many products that we have to figure out how we're going to make these products without fossil fuels if we ever run out of them. And the one thing that will provide us with that is biomass. So keep that in mind. What are some advantages to biomass? Uh, well, basically, they're going to give us a, a, a lot of opportunity for industry, including agricultural opportunities. Um, farmers can now grow crops for uh, producing energy, which is another a way to make money. We're going to be able to stop depending on this area, Saudi Arabia, which controls most of our petroleum reduce our dependence on oil in general because we're going to have an opportunity to create biofuels and, and we become the sole providers, which would be great. We can convert garbage. We just finished talking about landfills. So we could reduce landfill burden and take that waste and turn it into energy, which is a great 
opportunity. There's going to be always some disadvantages. Um, with burning biomass, you're burning organic matter. So at the end of the day, there's going to be some emissions. And I, I wouldn't just say CO2, but I want you to focus on this because although this is a disadvantage, it's also an advantage. If we burn CO, uh, biomass and produce CO2, we're also going to get the opportunity to grow more plants because if we want to be able to continue to provide biomass fuel, we got to create plantations to grow this fuel. So they consider that cycle being replenished. So really, we're not really uh, adding extra emissions into the atmosphere. And the same goes with any organic matter. But the bottom line is, in order to meet this principle, so not continue to emit CO2 because you're adding uh, plants to photosynthesize, you're going to have all the problems associated with farming, which is our unit nine. So think of erosion and land degradation and um, topsoil loss, uh, it, water loss from irrigation, leaching, uh, all the problems associated with farming are, are directly linked to biomass because we're growing crops in order to be able to produce energy. I put this in here. I want you to focus on these things all over your book, okay? And keep that in mind. I went over them, but just take your time to read them. And this is specific for each type of biomass fuel. So hydroelectric, second power source or second renewable source, clean and never runs out. It's actually an indirect form of solar energy and uh, main use and only use for electricity production. So whereas high, uh, biomass produces all our energy needs, hydroelectric primary focus primary focus is for electricity production. Where in the world it's used, we are using it in US, Canada, and Brazil. And you, again, you don't have to know these for the exam, focus on the United States. How it works. We've got a large body of water, which we call a reservoir, right here. So a lake, a river, a, a huge body of water. And then they build a barrier to hold that water back, and that's called a dam. They will open the dam in times of uh, need, obviously, especially when they need more uh, electricity, because that's what we're focusing on. The water is going to flow through this penstock, and uh, on the other end is a turbine. And just like you know, it's going to spin the turbine, which is attached to a generator. See the generator, and that generator is going to send electric current to the power lines into your home. Energy transformations, because it's a body of water, here's the beautiful reservoir, and it's uh, standing water, it's potential energy, it's stored energy, which then becomes mechanical energy when it comes pouring down and then it sends electrical current. Advantages. Biggest advantage is the fact that it is cheap per kilowatt hour. So remember initial cost is huge and maintaining these are relatively... Uh, inexpensive so that's another part of the cheap but the main thing is kilowatt hours these these dams and this construction can last up to 100 years it's usually anywhere between 50 and 100 so they have a long lifespan this reservoir or this body of water behind the dam has multi-use uh, functions so it can be used for recreation it could be used for irrigation it could provide uh, a utility plant for the surrounding areas and it could also help control floods. One of the best things and one of the things we want to look at is hydroelectric power is very efficient. Its ability to produce energy is, is great. So think of that because that's important. Disadvantages. Biggest disadvantages affect fish migration. And I have a video, I'm not going to show it to you, but remind me to show it to you in class. It decreases natural flow of uh, fertilizer to land. So that those barriers and that construction eliminates that flow of, of fertilizer and nutrients going to the land. And then it also uh, could lead to floods and major environmental damages if these dams crack, as you heard in your presentations in class. Remember to look at this in your book.